This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. We end today's show looking at Saudi Arabia. Over the weekend, the kingdom carried out the largest mass execution in its modern history, putting 81 men to death within a span of 24 hours. The official Saudi press agency said in a statement, the men were guilty of crimes ranging from terrorism to so-called deviant beliefs. Among those executed, people arrested for participating in human rights demonstrations. Rights groups say many of the defendants were denied access to a lawyer, held incommunicado and tortured. While human rights groups have condemned the execution, the Biden's response has been more muted. On Monday, State Department spokesperson Ned Price was asked about the U.S. response. Does the United States also condemn the executions? Well, we've seen these reports uh, that uh, Saudi Arabia executed 81 people uh, on March 12th. We continue to raise with Saudi Arabia the need to ensure fair trial guarantees, freedom from arbitrary and extrajudicial detention, transparency, the rule of law, and freedom of religion and belief. This comes as UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is expected to travel to Saudi Arabia for talks with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to push the world's top oil exporter for increased output as he called on the West to end its addiction to Russian fuel. Axios recently reported U.S. officials have been holding talks with Saudi officials about a possible visit by President Biden to discuss global oil supply and, quote, help repair relations. For more, we're joined by Sarah Lee Whitson, executive director of Democracy for the Arab World Now, or DAWN, a group founded by Jamal Khashoggi, who was assassinated in the Saudi consulate in Turkey in 2018. In fact, she's involved in a lawsuit representing his his fiance for that murder. Sarah Lee Whitson, can you talk about what happened this weekend and then the Biden administration courting Mohammed bin Salman? Uh, it's very clear that the Saudi government thought that they could take advantage of the Ukraine crisis to uh, quietly uh, carry out this execution of 81 uh, people in the country, uh, not worried, really, that there would be a serious international reaction, uh, both because of the Ukraine crisis, but also because of the fact that Western governments, including the United States and the United Kingdom, are basically pleading with Mohammed bin Salman to increase oil production. Um, so really, it was a way for Mohammed bin Salman to demonstrate that he can do whatever he wants, uh, including engaging in this shocking act of bloodletting uh, against 81 uh, people in Saudi Arabia in a single day. And who they are, those men that were well, killed? Uh, we have some limited information. Um, we know that seven of the men uh, were Yemenis, uh, believed to be prisoners of war. There was one Syrian national among them. Uh, the remainder appear to be Saudi citizens, uh, 41 of whom we believe to be from the uh, Shia minority community in the country. So, Sarah Lee Whitson, can you talk about the White House's response to this mass execution, the largest in uh, Saudi modern history, and how that fits into uh, both the Biden administration, the British prime minister going to Saudi Arabia, possibly Biden, to repair relations? Well, it's pathetic, and it's for all the world to see uh, at a time when President Biden is trying to rally support among the international community for international laws, international norms, human rights, all of the principles that he has invoked uh, in Ukraine, he's choosing not to invoke in Saudi Arabia, and the executions of 81 men uh, is uh, among them. Uh, when Iran executed uh, an Iranian wrestler uh, unjustly, unfairly, the U.S. not only condemned it repeatedly, but sanctioned uh, the Iranian judges involved in that case. Uh, the contrast to Saudi Arabia could not be starker. And while it's clear that the United States thinks it can try to woo uh, Mohammed bin Salman to increase oil production, the damage that's being done uh, to America's credibility, the damage being done to the very international laws and norms that the United States is now clinging to, uh, to rally support, is tremendous. And it's really the persistent failure of the Biden administration and administrations before it uh, to see the global costs that we are paying uh, to paper over, uh, look the other way, uh, when our so-called partners uh, in the Middle East carry out atrocities of their own. Uh, before we go, and we're going to do a part two with you, Sarah, and we're going to put it online at democracynow.org, if you can talk about the lawsuit you're involved with and um, what it means to Mohammed bin Salman. 
Uh, well, our lawsuit uh, is a lawsuit that my organization, Dawn, is bringing together with Khadija Jangiz uh, here in U.S. District Court uh, for the murder of Mohammed bin Salman, the damage she's caused Khadija in doing that, uh, as well as the damage to our organization. The murder uh, the, of Khashoggi. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman uh, has tried to dismiss the complaint, uh, but now he uh, continues to seek that President Biden uh, exempt him under the principles of sovereign immunity, even though the Biden administration has said repeatedly that he is not head of state uh, and therefore under uh, U.S. laws wouldn't be entitled to sovereign immunity. Mohammed bin Salman is now demanding uh, that the U.S. intervene in the American judiciary to block our lawsuit. And we two have 10 other seconds. Mohammed bin Salman in exchange for increasing oil production. It's a shocking effort to intervene in our judicial system. And we're going to talk more about this. People check it out at democracynow.org. Sarah Lee Whitson, executive director of Democracy for the Arab World Now, or Dawn. I'm Amy Goodman. Stay safe.